We all know we should be creating more and better content for our ideal clients. Today, what I wanna do is I'm gonna give you seven secrets to creating great real estate content. We are in the content economy, so to speak, I guess you could say, because basically now, if you're gonna draw your ideal client, they're gonna find you with a couple of different ways. They're gonna find you by the content you're creating. Are you adding value? Are you entertaining? Are you someone that is the resource in your local marketplace? So what I wanna do today is I wanna break down the seven steps and the secrets that I see to creating great real estate content. The first step in the process is defining your ideal client. Who is it that you work best with? Who do you feel that you can add the most value to? Listen, if we're getting ready to try to decide the type of content we're gonna do, we need to know who the person is that we're making the content for. So who is it for you? If you're not curious, if you're curious and you aren't sure about who that ideal client is, I wanna give you a couple ways you can figure this out. Go back over the last two years and, I, and look at the sales you've had. See if there are some patterns. Did you sell to first-time home buyers or did you sell to investors? Did you sell to someone that was a move-up buyer? Did you sell to someone that was relocating? Or the listings you, did, you, kept, you got, were they in a certain part of your community? Were they in a certain area? Were they in a certain school district? What was it that you can begin to see that formulates this ideal client of yours where you understand exactly who they are, what they're about, and what's important to them? Once we've got that first step, then it's natural for us to move to the second step. All right, number one is finding our ideal client and identifying that person. Now the second step is this, once we know who that person is, what is it that person wants? And what is the content we can provide for them? So think of it this way, your content is gonna be completely different if you have someone that is a luxury buyer. They're gonna have a completely different type of content that you're gonna provide for the first time home buyer possibly. Think about it, an investor is gonna be looking for certain things, certain numbers, certain types of market reports that maybe the person who's looking to move up in the market is not gonna want. So now that we know who your ideal client is, I'm gonna ask you this question. What is it that that ideal client really wants to know about? Think about those things, ask yourself those things. Possibly you have been in their seat at one point. Maybe it was when you were a first time home buyer. What were the things you wanted to know? Was it about loan processes? What is it about what it takes to qualify? Was it how to get pre-qualified? Now think about this. When you moved up and you bought a different place, what were the questions you wanted to answer and start creating content for that? Maybe it was, what does it take to be able to buy a new house? Do I have to sell my, pre my current house in order to buy another house? What are the pitfalls of moving from a small house to a larger house or whatever those questions were for you and if you're an investor what are the things that you want to know do you want to know cap rate do you want to understand those things now that we know who our ideal client is and we're beginning to understand exactly what it is they want to know now we can move on to step three Step three is how do they consume content? Are they people that watch YouTube? Are they people that are on social media? Are they people that read written word, maybe blog posts or something along those lines, or are they somebody that listens to podcasts? You see, each and every different group of people consumes contents in different ways. You know, it used to be the golden rule, treat others as you would want to be treated, but the platinum rule says treat people the way they want to be treated. So if we're going to make sure that we're connecting with our people, our ideal client in the with the ideal content, we need to make sure that we're giving it to them in a way that's easy for them to consume. When you take the time to really figure out exactly what it is that your ideal client wants and how they want to have it received from them, now you're on a path to success. Step four is where do they spend time? You see, if we're gonna create great content, we gotta have a great distribution program as well. Is your ideal client someone that spends more time on TikTok or on Instagram? Do they spend more time on LinkedIn or do they read blog posts? Is it someone that consumes podcasts or they watch YouTube? You see, we really need to identify who that is, that ideal client is, and what their patterns are so that we position ourselves to be able to add the most value in the best possible way. We talked about the type of content they consume. Well, let me talk about specifics as far as types of areas. So for instance, I had um, one, of, uh, one of our agents mentioned it to me this way. She said that when she's thinking about posting on LinkedIn because her ideal client might be someone that is an investor, she thinks of it this way. She talks in, the, in a way that she would talk to her husband, facts. 
She just gives them the facts, very to the point. And then when she thinks about the group of people that she's talking to that are buying homes, which in the majority of those cases, a lot of times the decision is being made by the wife. In those cases, she's speaking more about the feelings of the home. She's speaking more expressively. She's talking a little bit differently in the way that she's doing. Understanding which of those types of profiles you have for the people, understanding which platform they're on, or sometimes what she says is she'll think about people, are these people that are just scrolling through TikTok? So if so, maybe on a, a younger type of buyer, maybe we need to be doing short form content that is being specifically utilized on Instagram Reels, on TikTok. What are those things and those platforms that our ideal client is on? Now, we've thought about this. We've got our ideal client. We've talked about what is it that that ideal client wants to know about? What is it and how do they consume it? And where are they at? Now we're ready to really step into the meat of this and that's the next step. The fifth step is to make sure that your content is visually appealing. Think of it this way. Now we're in a place where people are just doing this. They're just scrolling through as they're online, whether they're looking at YouTube, whether they're looking at Instagram, or wherever they are, they're just scrolling through. The thing that makes people stop is something visual. So how can you make your content even more visually appealing? Some of the things you can do is, is to utilize, if you're shooting video in particular, to make sure that your lighting is correct. Make sure that it's an area maybe that they're used to seeing. So maybe like in ours, we're in a beach community, you're shooting some of your content with the beach in the background. It makes people stop immediately. Maybe you're somewhere and you're in a city where if you went to the city downtown in the area and you shot content there, it would be intriguing to people because they know exactly where that is and it's something that would visually capture their attention. Think of it this way. Clear, concise video that has good video quality is something that is always gonna make people stop and it's gonna keep them on listening to your messaging longer. So maybe that is stepping your game up a little bit. Maybe you've been shooting on your iPhone and the iPhone is a great place to start, but maybe if you're wanting to take it to the next level, maybe you need to invest in a camera that has a different lens that helps you blur the background or makes it a little more appealing. Maybe it's something where if you're gonna make it more attractive, if you're talking about a community, maybe you're gonna layer in some video of that community. Maybe you're gonna highlight some of the areas in your community in your content. Maybe now we start showing those things instead of just talking about those things. You see, when you get to a place where you've got your video quality in a place where it's more attractive, I promise you're gonna get more watches. Number six is audio quality matters. Listen, if you're just something where it's hard for people to listen or to hear what you're saying, it's going to make a big difference. You know, we spend a little money on a microphone system here so you can hear the quality of our audio coming through. When we first started, we were just using our iPhone and we just simply invested in about $20 for an eight foot long cord that would plug in that had a little mic that would sit on my lapel and it just improved our audio quality. The better the audio quality, the longer people are gonna listen. There's nothing more frustrating than to get and see someone that you want to follow and you want to consume that, that information and you can't hear it properly or it's got a lot of background noise. Make sure you're focusing in on your audio quality. When you have video quality where it's visually appealing and you have audio quality that continues to keep people listening, they're going to listen longer, their relationship is going to grow deeper and their trust is going to just grow with you more and more each and every time they watch one of your pieces of content. Number seven, consistency is key. Listen, if you think you're going to do one video about your community and then you're done, um, I hate to say this, but you're probably being extremely naive. You need to commit to consistency in your content. So whatever that is for you, whether that's a once a month monthly email newsletter where you're videoing that and you're presenting it in a way that people want to consume it. Maybe it's something where you're like, I'm going to do one reel about something in my community each and every week, or I'm going to be on my stories on Instagram talking about how I run my business at least three times a day. Whatever it is for you, plan in advance for the consistency that you want because if you don't plan it out, I promise you, other things are going to come up. We're in the business where we might as well be called firemen. We're just putting out fires all day long. Things pop up, we run over here. You have to have a plan of action that gives you the consistency. Consistency leads to conversion. I'll promise you, if you get consistent with your content, you're going to get more conversion. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, I promise the ability that you have to create quality content that is exactly what your ideal client wants is going to be critical. So what is it that you're doing to sharpen your saw, so to speak, to make sure that that quality content you want to provide for your clients, that you're doing everything in your power to make sure that you present it in the best possible way. I hope this has been helpful and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. 
I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.